Brethren, we have met to worship. Welcome. This is Joyous Sounds, the uh, United Methodist Bell Choir that has kind of reached its tentacles into the community and other churches. So there's a few churches represented here, and uh, we're really glad about that. Um, we want to thank Rebecca for playing the uh, bell tree solo. You're going to see a lot of different techniques this evening, and I'll try to point them out as we do them. Um, and she was accompanied by Doris Points. That tune was written by an itinerant Methodist preacher who was an Irish immigrant in the early 1800s. Yes. So um, my job this evening is to keep talking until everyone gets set up for the next song. <laughs> <laughs> that's why that's us all here. OK. Each song that they play is in a different key. So sometimes you'll see people picking up bells and putting down bells. It's because they have the white key of the piano instead of the black key of the piano in their hand, and sometimes they need to switch. And sometimes they share a bell, like one time your neighbor plays it and the next time you need to play it. So you'll see some of that shifting around while they're doing that. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is sing a hymn so they can really make sure they're, so oh, you're all set, look at you. All right, we're gonna sing anyway. In my heart there rings a melody. And Doris is gonna play it through once for you.
to know this, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Um, this was written in the 1920s by Elton Roth, who was from Bern, Indiana, which was right by where I went to college. So there's a bunch of Swedish people in Bern, Indiana. Um, and uh, we were already done playing that, so Doris, thank you. You're gonna, she's going to play again for us a little bit. The next song is like our showcase piece, because it features a lot of different techniques on the bells. You're going to hear singing bells over on this side that are supposed to sound warm and yummy like this mount, the sun is coming up over the mountains. And then you're going to hear wind chimes over here. And then you're going to hear the melody come through on the chimes that were gifted to us right now. So you should, uh, the sun crests over this horizon and then the earth wakes to a new day. So enjoy, morning has broken.
excited when we, when we do it right. <laughs> uh, this next song I was introduced to uh, last summer when I had the pleasure of attending a handbell conference last summer in California. You didn't know that uh, a bunch of handbell ringers get together and it looks much like this and you spend one evening and the whole next day practicing, but instead of one set of tables, they're five deep. And so there's like this much, plus five rows behind them, plus the, the people that are really good get to stand in front. <laughs> um, and so this was one of the tunes that I was introduced to at that conference. And in this one, there is a technique called a martellato lift. So martellato is into the table. Somebody want to show me? Yeah, it's straight into the table. A mart lift is into the table and lift it up. Two different techniques, two different sounds. So this has a lot of that um, when we remember to do it. Um, it is a bright and cheery piece and it really cooks. So we hope you enjoy Jubilee.
an awful lot of fun, but we also worry a lot. <laughs> Uh, the next tune, we have uh, been gifted a set of Malmark hand chimes, which you saw a little bit of in the first, the first song. Um, this only uses two octaves of bells, so one of the players we relegated to play the flute, so Becky's going to play the flute for us, and we didn't have a spot for the other one, so he's going to take a little snooze while we do this one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a little snooze, yes. So this is a good time to mention that we're going to do introductory bell lessons for anybody that would like to. You basically need to know how to count. Ta, ta, ti, ti, ta, one, two, three, four. And you need to be able to tell if the note is in a space or on a line. From there, I can teach you. And actually, I can teach you the other stuff too. But, um, but so if you'd like to learn, or even if you just want to give it a shot, even if you don't plan on joining us, on June 3rd, it's a Saturday morning on June 3rd, we're going to do an introductory bell lesson for anybody who would like to come, all ages, little ones up to more experienced people, in age, not in bell ringing. Um, so anyway, there we have it. Then this next song is called It Is Well With My Soul. Raise your hand if you know the story behind this song. A few of you know this. So. Horatio Spafford was an attorney and real estate investor, and he lost a lot of money in the Chicago fire of 1871, and around the same time, his four-year-old son died of scarlet fever. Oh man, I'm gonna squat bring this, shoot. <laughs> Think, thinking a vacation would do his family good, he sent his wife and four daughters on a ship to England, planning to join them after he finished some pressing business at home. However, crossing the Atlantic, the ship was in a terrible collision and sunk. More than 200 people lost their lives, including all four of Horatio's children. His wife survived. Upon arriving in England, she sent a telegram to her husband that began, saved alone, what shall I do? Horatio immediately set sail for England, and at one point during his voyage, the captain of the ship made him aware of the spot that they were passing over was where the shipwreck had occurred. He thought about his daughters. Words of comfort and hope filled his mind, and he wrote them down. And since then, they became this hymn. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou has taught me to know, it is well with my soul.
Oh, Love How Deep is a 15th century Latin tune written by a young man who would later become a monk. It's usually performed during Lent. The hymn begins with the sheer wonder and ecstasy at the mystery of the incarnation. A distinctive feature of the hymn is the almost incessant repetition of the two words, for us, 12 times in the hymn. The effect is to stress that every event and action of Christ's life was done for the benefit of humankind. The willingness of God to take on the human form in Jesus was for the sake of all humanity. Thus, the theology of great kenosis or self-emptying uh, that is talked about in Philippians 2 permeates the text of this. We are accompanied again by Rebecca on flute. You'll hear a technique called swinging on this piece, and I'm pretty sure you'll recognize when that happens. <laughs> and I'm going to uh, play the missing bells, so you won't, they will not have a conductor for this. And the other, no, no, never mind. Oh, no.
Okay, our next one, we played at Thanksgiving, and it's, the tune is called Dix, and it's a pre prelude on Dix, and otherwise known as For the Beauty of the Earth. It was written by Foliot Pierpont in 1864, and praises the beautiful world that we inhabit and the many things that he loved. He mentions many aspects of existence for which he is grateful, including the earth, the skies, the trees, the flowers, human love, and the best gift, divine. This is a joyous hymn. It's a reminder of all the beauty that surround us, certainly in Mesquite, and to not take this for granted. You will hear a type of call and response between the bells and the organ, once again featuring Doris Points. Oh, um, give thanks. We typically also sing this th hymn at Thanksgiving, but it rings true all year. In 1978, a young seminary graduate named Henry Smith was struggling to find work and coming to terms with a degenerative eye condition that would eventually leave him legally blind. Despite those hardships, Henry found hope in 2 Corinthians 8, 9 and penned Give Thanks, one of the most beloved songs of our time. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich, because of what the Lord has done. Years later, a young worship leader named Don Moen would record Henry's song and help to carry it around the world. Today, you can hum give thanks at almost any church in the world, no matter the country or the language, and someone will recognize the simple song. You're going to hear the techniques of echoing, which, somebody want to show what an echo is? So you'll see echoing, and you will see thumb dampening, okay, <laughs> and also swinging. Good thing, because I almost hit the piano. Um, so uh, give thanks. <laughs> <laughs> 
And if you want to sing along, go ahead. for another hour? Oh. Um, Canterbury Chimes, you would think we would be playing the chimes for this, but we're not. We are playing uh, all the bells on this so we can play all three octaves. It's meant to sound like church bells pealing. So there's Westminster Chimes and there are Canterbury Chimes. So we're going to be singing that for you.
this piece is a challenge because of all the syncopated rhythms. And in fact, I had more than one of the ringers say to me, I quit. <laughs> Um, and we really do, I knew they could do it, but we just needed some time to rehearse and everything. Syncopation means when, when you're not playing one, two, three, it's when you're playing Okay, and they were having a little trouble with that. Um, sometimes I dance to help them. Uh, this globally popular Christian song again was written by an Australian worship leader in 1993. It was written during a time that he was struggling, or she was struggling with money worries and the stresses of raising a young family. One day, when she was feeling particularly discouraged, she slipped into the toy room where they kept their piano and put into song some biblical truths to which the stressed young mother was holding on to, in particular drawing from the songs. She explained, I wrote it when I was feeling discouraged. I felt I could either scream and pull my hair out or praise God. She added the line, nothing compares to the promise I have in you. And that was something she clung to when her circumstances seemed so bleak. And uh, she says, I think that rings true with anyone going through tough times. So we are going to, this is our second to the last song, right? Yes. Um, we're going to finish, well, wait, let me not. We're done with that. We're going to do shout to the Lord. And if you want to sing this one, you can sing too. <laughs>
We have one more song in our concert, and first of all, we want to wish all of the mothers in the audience a happy Mother's Day. This is my mama right here. Happy Mother's Day, mama. Also, if you didn't buy a Mother's Day present, the Selbos have some handmade crafts that they said they would donate the proceeds to the bell choir. So we buy music, and if we need, um, if we break any of the stands, or we need new tablecloths, uh, all of that kind of stuff takes money. And we also would like to add to the chimes so that we can have three octaves of those as well. So anyway, if you would like to donate at the end, there is a little church in the back on your way out. It's a little offering church thingy. You can put something in there. You don't have to. Or you could stop and pick up a lovely art piece by um, the Selbos, and that would help us out as well. Our final song is, and, a, and don't forget about June 3rd. I'll put everything in the churches and also on social media. June 3rd at 9.30 in the morning. And you can come and, you can play, come and play around tonight if you want, just to see what it's like. Um, but we'll, we'll go from the very beginning. This is a quarter note. This is your left hand. And so we'll go from the very beginning if you want to do that. You are, you are, this is our living proof of that you can learn it because Leslie doesn't read music or anything, so we've, she's done a fabulous job. Our final song you may recognize from uh, the Baroque era, um, George Friedrich Handel. You'll see shaking, table dampening, and you have to wait at the end because it seems like it's over, but it's not quite over. So uh, you know that at the end of the Hallelujah Chorus. So we, we thank you, first of all, for coming out on a Sunday afternoon. I know you had to give up your naps or whatever else it is that you do on <laughs> Sunday afternoon. <laughs> My pool time. But uh, it sure is a joy to work with this group. We have an awful lot of fun. Um, we care for each other. And uh, we, it's just fun to come on Saturday morning and, and be together and ring together. So our final song, Classical Easter.
Oh, Marie, how can we thank you? We love you so much. So much. So much. I get emotional, so anybody else who wants to. <laughs> But anyway, Marie has given her time and her talents and made us into the Belfire we are. And we've developed friendships and we've been through bad times and good times. And we just want you to know how much we love you. And we have a Starbucks card for you and these beautiful flowers. <laughs> This lady um, is the music director at the high school, so she's with children and teenagers all week. And then Saturday morning, we get her up, and she's uh, setting tables up at 9 o'clock in the morning. So who else, could, who else would do that? <laughs> you want to join us.